College Racing teases a driver announcement. Who is it? We'll talk a little bit of Silly Season and IndyCar at Milwaukee. Not off to a hot start. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Call Racing has a driver announcement scheduled for Saturday morning at Darlington. On Thursday, they posted a teaser video of somebody, potentially a driver, signing what appears to be a driver's contract. But all that you can see is their hand, specifically their thumb. Well, good news for all of you. I'm a noted thumb expert, actually the most renowned thumb expert in the entire Midwest. I've been studying thumbs for years. Back in 04, when I was working for Everham, I was studying thumbs to see who was trying to take our notes from us. So I put on my trust glasses here my investigative glasses can't see a thing when I put these on because I got contacts and these are prescription and I went ahead and looked at it with these glasses on because that's the only way you're ever going to be able to find out it turns out it doesn't matter what distance I put I still can't see a thing and I looked at this thumb and I compared it to a number of other different driver thumbs out there and I said who could this possibly be well it turns out I didn't actually even need to do that because I already know who it is it's going to be Christian Eckes Christian Eckes will move up from the truck series uh, to the Xfinity series in 2025 driving call for Call racing in that number 16 car replacing AJ Allmendinger in that ride of course Eckes has had a monster year in 2024 in the truck series and 17 races he has 16 top 10s 11 top fives three wins and is definitely a championship favorite alongside Corey Heim it's Corey Heim it's Christian Eckes it's going to be one of those two both of them should move up to the cup series like honestly both of them could they're talented enough and mature enough at this point to make that jump but for Eckes he will be moving up to college racing next season he'll be partnering alongside Josh Williams Daniel Dye an announcement that came out last week at Daytona as well as well now himself he can't really partner himself but he'll be up there and that's and not not a bad lineup for college racing. You have Eckes who comes in and should be a contender immediately. Daniel Dye has looked really good in his extended st series starts this year, including a pair of top tens got taken out at Michigan. Not really his fault, but has progressively gotten better up to this point. And then you have Josh Williams, who he's kind of hot or cold, right? Some races he looks pretty decent. Some races he's just back where he used to run at DGM and maybe he'll find his footing in 2025. For Colleg though, I think this is a really good move for them to sign Eckes because I think Eckes is a, he's a hot commodity out there. He's a good prospect. He's a prospect that has maybe taken a little bit more, more, more time to develop, but he's become a really stout one at that. Doesn't have money behind him. So that's where things get a little bit iffy. But for Colleg, if they do ever want to have their cup program taken seriously having Christian Eck is developing your Xfinity pipeline and then potentially moving him up to the cup series is a great way to do that because you're able to get a good prospect a guy that can't necessarily go out and get some other rides because he doesn't bring funding with him Collard can of course self-fund this between the number of different Matt Collard companies or they can find him sponsorship for it whether that be Celsius or Circle or something else that goes along with it so for Eckes and for Colleg, I think this is a good win. Obviously, Eckes, you know, people out there are like, well, if that's where he wants to go, if, he, if his goal is to make it to Cup, is Colleg really the best place for him? Listen, in this moment, I think he's focused on just getting up to the Xfinity Series. Obviously, yeah, he wants to make it to the Cup Series, and maybe that is with Colleg. But for now, the Colleg Xfinity program gives him a good shot to put himself out there and get the results that uh, I think people want to see on paper, at least. So I think this is a good move for both of them. Colleg is a really good driver. Uh, Christian Eck is, is jumping into a really good Xfinity car. And at the end of the day, it's a bit of a win-win. Moving on to some other silly season stuff. Uh, I expect Nick Sanchez to move up to the Xfinity series next year in 2025. How exactly that team dynamic is going to work, not 100% sure. I've heard maybe Rev Racing with some help from Colleague, but I expect those parties to probably be in the mix here at least definitely the rev racing part of it but sanchez has looked uh decent pretty good this year in the truck series he's got two wins um he's a guy that can get you the results i think he might be a little inconsistent still but a move up to the xfinity series probably feels like the next logical move for him so uh, it's not the craziest thing and he definitely has paid his dues down to the truck series to move up Harrison Burton, of course, is a hot topic this week. And now people, after his win, are like, where's Harrison Burton going? Now Harrison Burton has a ton of fans out there. People are saying that he deserves to be in the Cup Series. He should take that Rick Ware ride. He should go over to Front Row Motorsports. He should go to the third RFK car if they start one up. That's a absolutely bonkers idea, but go for it if you want to. You live in banana land. Uh, for Harrison Burton, though, haven't really heard much for him on the Cup Series side of things. Uh, he does obviously bring some money with Dex Imaging, assuming that stays with him. Uh, AM Racing is a team that I heard on uh, Thursday could possibly be in play for Harrison Services next year. 
outside of that, uh, I'm not sure exactly where Harrison Burton ends up next year. I think he has options in the Xfinity Series. Uh, the Xfinity Series silly season is still kind of finding its footing, trying to level set and dis- determine which rides are open and who's going where at this point. But for Harrison, I don't expect him to be in the Cup Series. I uh, don't expect him to be at FRM. Uh, maybe Rick Ware, if that's where he wanted to go, but I definitely think he has multiple options down in the Xfinity series. That brings us over to another driver that's in the Cup Series this year uh, that has also been fired from his ride, that being Corey LaJoy. Now, Corey LaJoy's name that gets brought up a lot. I know a lot of people are like, ah, he's going to be stacking burgers next year. It doesn't deserve to be in the Cup Series. That's not. I have heard that Corey LaJoy will be going to the Truck Series next year. Uh, the truck I heard was replacing Ekka's. Um, down at uh, MHR. We'll see if that happens. If that does happen, that is a stout truck to get in. That's a truck that he can absolutely go out and win races in and finally get that long-awaited first win on the NASCAR National Touring Series level. And for Corey, I think it's a good way to go down and rebuild some confidence. Not that I don't think he has confidence because he clearly does, but after he nearly Kevin LePage the field last week at Daytona, uh, might need to go down and just brush up on the on the skill set a little bit there. Other things that I've been hearing, uh, Zane Smith and FRM. Of course, it was talked about uh, earlier in the week when Kevin Harvick mentioned that he heard that Ford was trying to block Kevin or block Zane Smith rather from rejoining FRM because they weren't happy with the way he left last year. Uh, I have heard from the pipeline that it seems like Zane to FRM is still going to happen. I still expect him to land there. Uh, I've heard some other things that maybe it might be somebody else's, but for now, Zane is still the name that I keep hearing going over to FRM. Uh, Chandler Smith, that's a name that keeps coming up as well. Bob Pockers mentioned him for that uh, ride over at FRM as well. The, the brother Smiths going at each other, not actually related. Uh, not sure where Chandler goes, right? He bought his way out of college racing because he wanted to go over to Joe Gibbs Racing to get in the Toyota pipeline because he thought that would be the fast track to the Cup Series for him. Uh, forgot Corey Heim existed and is a much higher ranked prospect than where Chandler Smith is at. Now Chandler sounds like he's out at Joe Gibbs Racing at the end of the year, probably because some of his money is gone, if not a lot of it, uh, that was used to fund that ride. And now he seems to maybe be at a career crossroads here. So for Chandler, not sure where he ends up at, but do expect him to go somewhere. Just I'm not sure which good open rides are available for him at the moment. And then Dirt Tracker on Friday. If you don't follow him, go ahead and give him a follow. If you're into dirt track racing, he's got great news, great insight and, uh, you know, great silly season stuff that, that he provides over there. Mentioned that Corey Day will be making his Truck Series debut for McAnally this year in that number 91 truck that we've seen Zane Smith drive, Jack Wood. Uh, Sounds like he's going to do one to four races in the Truck Series this year, uh, which is good. That's a really good truck. That's a really fast team. And then Dirt Tracker also said that a full Xfinity season could still possibly be on the table for, uh, for Corey Day next year. I've heard that it might be a mixture of a a couple series, three series, maybe doing a lot of Arca stuff as well as some trucks and maybe some Xfinity stuff as well. Uh, but it definitely sounds like the Corey Day transition off of dirt to pavement full time is very much in full swing for 2025. And last but not least in the silly season talk, I know people out there are going to be like, what about Ryan Priest? Because he's got a devout group of fans. Hats off to you guys. You're devoted. You care a lot. When it comes to Ryan Priest, have literally not heard anything. I think Rick Ware Racing is in play for him. Obviously, uh, Adam Stern mentioned that he could possibly be in play for a third RFK car if they do indeed want to start one up because they have a previous relationship with Kroger. All of that is stuff that could plausibly work out, but nothing definitive that I've heard uh, from anybody at this point. But speaking of Ryan Priest, he is a Driven Sunglasses athlete. I'm a Driven Sunglasses ambassador. Head over to DrivenSunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. These are the Camber sunglasses. I know you guys have heard me talk about them before. They are one of my favorite pairs from Driven Sunglasses. So head over to DrivenSunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Now that you're back from DrivenSunglasses.com and you use code BREAKHARD at checkout, we need to talk about IndyCar. And it's doubleheader at Milwaukee this weekend because ticket sales are poor, like really poor, like to the extent where Jennifer Lopez would cancel her tour because that's how bad ticket sales are. High school football games in Texas are probably going to have more fans in the stands than what we're going to have at Milwaukee this weekend. IndyCar CEO Mark Miles said that we're not going to judge the success success of Milwaukee off this weekend alone. Of course, they want to have more than 15,000 people in the stands. But for this year, this is just a good year to set a baseline and, and build off of. 
Yeah, sounds like they're going to have less than 15,000 people there. And that's not a shock. IndyCar in Milwaukee, while it has a long history, don't get me wrong, IndyCar in Milwaukee has been around for a long time and it has a ton of history there, but it does not produce good racing in the modern era of IndyCar. It just hasn't. There's a reason they stopped going in after 2015 and they haven't gone back until 2024. It's because the racing really wasn't that good. But the past decade, essentially, has been enough time for people to forget about how just not fun those races were. And then they're like, we got to get back to ovals. We got to get back to Milwaukee. But we don't, because as we've seen with this car, especially Gateway was an exception. Gateway was actually pretty good. Iowa was bad. IndyCar in the modern era on short tracks is really hit or miss. And I just do not have any hope for Milwaukee this weekend. And it doesn't sound like the fine people of Milwaukee do, do either. A doubleheader is... Uh, maybe a bit of an overreach. They got a little bit overzealous in the return to Milwaukee. Probably should have just been one race, but of course, IndyCar wants to add two races uh, to the schedule here, two dates rather. So they just did a double header. That first race, good thing it's going, going to be on Saturday at 6 p.m. on Peacock and probably 10,000 people are going to watch it, which might actually be the same amount of people that are there in the stands because uh, college football is on and I can only assume that that's going to distract most people. But when you look at the ticket website for uh, the Milwaukee Mile for the race this weekend, plenty of seats available. But your premium seating, which is higher up on the grandstand, is asking $110 to go to one of these races. And I'll be honest, that is probably too expensive for most people to go to a 250 lapper um, for IndyCar at Milwaukee. You can go to the Indianapolis 500 for cheaper than $110 and get really decent seats. So maybe the ticket prices are too high. I will say the cheapest ticket price that you can get is $45. There is that they go up from 45 to I believe 70, 90, 110, kind of depending on where you want to sit at in the grandstand. But man, 15,000 fans, obviously you're going to get, you're going to hear drivers, commentators, people in the industry, everything saying that if you want Milwaukee on the schedule, you got to come out and support it. Well, I, I don't want Milwaukee on the schedule. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I would rather see them uh, go to a, a Kansas, a Kentucky, Homestead, literally anywhere else, because I think that big ovals, high speed ovals race a lot better with this car than on the short tracks. And I just really don't want to see Joseph Newgarden be in contention to, to win every single time or dominating these races. But yeah, I'm just I feel bad for IndyCar. I want IndyCar to succeed. IndyCar just literally cannot get out of its own way every single turn. And it seems like Milwaukee is just going to be a big waste of money. The state of Wisconsin put $8 million into the facility uh, to get it up to uh, you know, the level of being able to host big time events. And they lost the truck series. The last truck series race this past weekend uh, was it. They're not returning in 2025. And I'll be honest, I don't see how they really hold on to Milwaukee past 2025 for 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 IndyCar. IndyCar is down getting rid of the doubleheader for next year, which is definitely the right move. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Colleg, uh driver announcement tease facility season that we talked about, as well as IndyCar going to Milwaukee. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at BreakHardBlog.